We've all heard the Millwall chant, no one likes us, we don't care. We've all seen the heated rivalries of Boca vs River and Fenerbahce vs Galatasaray. We've seen the hate teams like Chelsea and Manchester City receive for pumping exorbitant amounts of money into their teams. Each team is hated deeply by rival fans, or in Millwall's case, by everyone. However, the hatred for these teams pales in comparison to one team, a team which the majority of you will never have heard of, and one which I had never heard of until recently. That team is Hakua Vienna, the most hated sports club that you've never heard of. One that, despite unimaginable levels of hostility, managed to excel and hit heights that not many sporting teams of their time ever reached. All of this achieved in just a brief existence. Hakua Vienna was founded in Austria in 1909 by Fritz Lohnerbeda and Ignaz Hermann Korner, a pair of Austrian Zionists. Influenced by Max Nordau's ideas of muscular Judaism, which advocated for Jewish people to become bolder, stronger, sprightlier, and physically and intellectually fit, the sports club was established and given the name Hakua after the Hebrew word for strength. Hakua was a proudly Jewish sporting club, competing in football, swimming, fencing, wrestling, athletics, and field hockey. The football team were kitted out in the blue and white colours of the Jewish national movement, and they wore a large Star of David proudly emblazoned on their chests. Everything about the team, its origins, its name, its kit, its ethos, and its supporters, exuded Jewish national spirit. This was a brave showing of Jewish pride in an increasingly hostile climate. In 1909, the year of the club's establishment, Vienna's mayor, Karl Luger, was a proud anti-Semite. He was a man who, as he put it, desired liberation from the shameful shackles of servitude to the Jews. These views were not uncommon in Vienna at the time, and were most definitely shared by a 20-year-old Adolf Hitler who was then a resident of the Austrian capital. From 1909 to 1920, Hakua Vienna climbed their way from the Austrian 4th Division all the way to the top flight, where they immediately showed they were a force to be reckoned with. In 1921 they finished 4th, and in 1922 they came as runners-up. But it was in the 1924-25 season, as the Austrian league turned professional, that Hakua would finally display their full footballing prowess. With 18,000 fans supporting them at home games, Hakua achieved 10 wins and 6 draws in their 20 games to claim the championship title in one of the most dramatic ways possible. In their third last game of the season, Hakua were away to Wiener Sport Club, knowing that a win was all they needed to clinch the title. With the score level at 2-2, Hakua's goalkeeper Alexander Fabian broke his arm in a challenge with the opposition striker. In an era where substitutes were not allowed, Fabian simply placed his arm in a sling and swapped positions with an outfield player. With just 9 minutes remaining in the game, Fabian was played through on goal by Erno Schwartz, where the one-armed goalkeeper turned striker shot weakly towards goal. Fortunately for him, the ball was deflected, taking it away from the opposition goalkeeper and instead turning it into the back of the net, securing the title for Hakua. Celebrations amongst the Jewish community were wild, with the commentator claiming Jewish dignity and Jewish self-confidence are in good hands now. This was to be the pinnacle for the short life of Hakua Vienna. Even such positive moments as their title win would often be tarnished by the hatred and abuse shown to them by opposition fans and players alike. For modern fans of the game, it is entirely impossible to fathom the scale of the hostility which Hakua faced in their endeavours to play football. Sure, Millwall are disliked heavily for their hooliganism. Tensions often boil over in rivalries between Baca and River or Fenerbahce and Galatasaray, but compared to Hakua, they may as well be exchanging pleasantries for the majority of Hakua supporters and players would be systematically murdered in little over a decade. The racism which would ultimately lead to such events was ever present at Hakua's matches during the 1920s. For example, in a match against local rivals, First Vienna, a fight erupted between opposing players, where first player Leopold Hoffmann was struck by Hakua player Bella Gutmann, leading to a crowd invasion and a several game suspension for Gutmann. For Gutmann, this event was not a standout one, recalling later that Hoffman was criticising his religion, so Gutmann simply reacted. In 1923, Hakua co-founder and president, Ignaz Hermann Korner, was physically attacked, not by a deranged opposition fan, but by an opposition player. In another situation, opposition crowds converged on Hakua supporters, spitting at them and pelting them with rocks and other projectiles. Players were subject to so many racist insults, both on and off the pitch, that it became a normality. Things got so bad for Hakua's players and supporters that members of Hakua's own wrestling team had to be hired in order to protect them, often letting the racist aggressors off lightly with just bloody skulls to worry about. Every away match Hakua played was in front of a crowd that did not see them as equal. 
a crowd that would do nothing to stop their eradication in little over a decade. Such hostility cannot even be imagined today. While Hacker was proud Jewish nationalism saw them faced with unrelenting hostility in Austria and Eastern Europe, it also provided them with the ability to conduct international tours due to the hundreds of thousands of Jewish fans they managed to accumulate worldwide. In the 1920s, such international tours were incredibly rare, and offered Hakko a chance to earn some real money and spread the idea of muscular Judaism which the football team continued to exemplify. It was on such tours that Hakko became the first foreign team to win on English soil after a 5-0 demolition of FA Cup holders West Ham United, whilst also taking the notable scalp of Slavia Prague, the first time they had been beaten on home soil in over a decade. The most successful of these tours was their 1926 tour of the United States, which saw them play 11 matches in front of almost a quarter of a million people. However, this tour came to mark their somewhat inevitable decline. Lured in by the financial rewards and less hostile attitudes towards Jewish people, many of Hakwa's best players stayed in the US upon reaching the conclusion of the tour, and this would spell the beginning of the end for Hakwa. The team was relegated in 1928, just three seasons after their famous championship victory, and while they would manage to gain promotion again after three more seasons, they would be relegated a final time in 1937, managing just one single win in 22 games. Hakua did not get to spend long in the second division before the Anschluss on the 12th of March 1938. The annexation of Austria into Nazi Germany saw Hakua banned, their matches nullified, the club shut down and all of the assets seized and handed over to the Nazi party. All of the players who chose to stay in the US bar one managed to survive the war. Those who stayed were not so lucky. Former Hakua coach Arthur Barr escaped to Palestine and documented the deaths of 37 former Hakua athletes, including seven footballers. Those systematically murdered included Max Schauer, captain of the team in their famous victory over West Ham, killed in Auschwitz, and Fritz Lohnerbeda, co-founder of Hakua, also killed in Auschwitz. Following the war, Hakua made an attempt to reform the once highly successful sport club. Refounded in 1945, the sports club exists to this day, however following four years in the Austrian second division, unable to recapture former glories due to the desolation of their people, the footballing side of Hakua was disbanded for good. For a club with such a turbulent and enthralling story, the lack of legacy left behind is somewhat surprising. Especially so considering the influence which Jewish Europeans played in the development of football around the world. There are a number of factors which could potentially explain this. The obvious one is that the majority of the fans of this team perished in the atrocities committed at the hands of the Nazi party. Many of those who were not fans were anti-Semites who had no interest in remembering a proudly Jewish club. Prior to Hakua's tour of the US, there were 200,000 Jewish people in Vienna. That number today stands at just 10,000. These combined factors will have eliminated the passage of Hakua's legend through word of mouth. Another factor could be the lack of interest in football for Jewish historians. When the Encyclopedia Judaica was published in the early 1970s, around five decades after Hakua's main triumphs, they were afforded only a passing mention in an article on sport, while entire articles were dedicated to individual scholars and artists. Nevertheless, the story of Hakua should act as a reminder that not only were Jewish people at the forefront in terms of influencing how football should be played, they were also leading the way in playing the game itself. Telling these stories allows Hakua's legacy and the legacy of the men and the women who contributed so much to the sport to stand tall, despite the many attempts to wipe such a legacy from the face of the earth. <laughs>